ripped from their families and put in residential schools. Indigenous children were forbidden to speak their own languages and practice their traditions. Many were sexually and physically abused. Sheila North's mother was one of the 150,000 children who passed through Canada's residential schools. The forced assimilation deeply scarred North's family. It strips away people's dignity. It strips away people's self-worth. And then when they pass on and become children or parents, they treat people the way they've been treated unconsciously. The Truth and Reconciliation Commission of Canada has spent years collecting survivor stories and compiling historical evidence. The mortality rate of those children who attended those schools was significantly higher than the mortality rate of the average Canadian child. While the federal residential school system began around 1883, the origins can be traced to as early as the 1830s. Every time I hear a politician say or refer to the dark chapter in our history, it's really offensive, infuriating, and hurtful for the communities that are dealing with this mass burial grave right now. I mean, that's a current, present trauma. The schools were often poorly ventilated and unsanitary. Many children died from influenza, measles, and tuberculosis. Government and school records didn't always record student names. It was a sort of death by assimilation or death by civilization. Residential schools are not just artifacts from long ago. The last residential school in Canada closed in 1996, and the unmarked burial sites in Kamloops, British Columbia, has highlighted how there is still so much to learn about the missing children. We are what we choose to remember, and we're also what we choose to forget. And this is a, a fundamental component of who we are, and our colonial history runs through these communities, and these events should be acknowledged. Emanuela Campanella, Global News, Toronto.